Hello everybody, I want to do a video on how gas masks work because I think a lot of people don't really actually know and it's quite simple but I thought I'd just do a very quick video on how uh, they actually work so the gas mask itself, all that really does is protect your face and eyes and make it easier to breathe through a filter because it's all a self-contained unit when the mask's on your face it creates a vacuum and that means air can only come in through this part assuming there's no rips in the mask, the filter and air comes out the exhale port which will be somewhere else on the mask normally close to where the filter goes in so the mask's more of a convenience thing it's there to protect your face and make sure you know everything's all self-contained so the important part of a gas mask so I'll remove the mask for now and you can see where the intake port is there it works using rubber seals normally so this one can't go in that way how the seal's made the seal can't go out so basically when you breathe in it's forced through that seal when you breathe out it's forced through this seal which keeps the uh, air sort of flowing in and out correctly from the mask so it doesn't depressurize so that's the mask itself mask come with straps or rubber hoods like this uh, the marks, masks themselves are very simple so put that aside for a second we'll look at the filter so this is a Russian filter from the Cold War these may or may not be safe to wear um, but I'll explain to you how they actually work and all mask filters are pretty much the same so inside the mask and this probably won't be visible on the camera very well uh, you might just see a corner of it there is that the first layer you have normally in a mask filter is what we'd call um, an aerosol filter or a particulate filter and how that works is when air comes in through the mask of gas so let's say a poisonous gas the aerosol filter is designed to block the um, harmful gases and how that works is the aerosol filter is made of a compound um, asbestos was used in World War II where it was packed very tightly together uh, other masks have used paper type things or used um, what's used a lot now is um, it's the insulation stuff and I've forgotten the name but fiberglass that's it uh, fiberglass and basically because these materials are sort of very thick um, and they have very small holes in them you can use that to let the oxygen through small holes but keep out a lot of the gases that might be denser and they're d therefore don't fit through so they're blocked from entering um, just a little dust mask type thing uses this but a very basic level like a very small kind of filter that dust because dust is you know visible to your eye it's obviously a lot bigger than air or oxygen so the air or oxygen can get through where the dust will be blocked on this filter here it's like any sort of dust filter but a bit more fine sort of holes than you'd have on the sort of normal dust filter but that's how it works it's essentially a glorified dust filter so on an industrial sort of dust mask you just have a very simple sort of one just to keep out dust on sort of master spraying pesticide it'd be a bit more complicated but it's the same sort of thing and on a sort of military filter it's the same but you know very fine holes and a bigger area so it's more effective and you can breathe more easily then we get to the second layer which is activated charcoal which is normally used um, in World War One, other substances were used that had a similar effect but activated charcoal is the best thing really that's been developed for it and activated charcoal has a very dense surface area so what the activated charcoal does is it's used to neutralize gases or chemicals that might get through the first layer such as poisons and then what will happen is because the charcoal has a very dense surface area um, what will happen is chemicals are adsorbed onto it and I'm saying adsorbed not absorbed because it's slightly different but adsorbs where things stick to it but don't go into it so basically poisonous elements would get would stick to the charcoal and the oxygen would carry on through um, to show you what activated charcoal is, I've got some activated charcoal tablets and hopefully you'll be able to see that they're these just sort of black tablets, they've got activated charcoal inside but these are designed if you've got like stomach aches and how activated charcoals work uh, tablets work is if you had a stomach ache trap wind you take them the um, trap wind gets trapped onto the tablets so it's not causing bloating um, activated charcoal like this although it's administered more sort of directly can be used to treat poisoning as well in the stomach so it's really useful stuff activated charcoal actually to have as a tablet but so that's the basically stage of the mask you first have your particulate filter which is like a very fine mesh if you want to say that um, made of some sort of compound say asbestos or whatever else fiberglass paper um, and the idea is that cotton maybe 
um, your gases try and go through but the gases can't actually get through um, or some of the gases at least can't get through there but the oxygen can because of how small the holes are then you get to your activated charcoal section and you can maybe just about hear that rattling the charcoal inside and what the activated charcoal does as mentioned is certain chemicals that get through the first stage then stick to the charcoal and don't go through for anything more sophisticated than that you need an SCBA unit which is a self-contained breathing apparatus the underwater version is called a scuba which I'm sure everyone's heard of and that's basically where you have an oxygen tank attached to the mask and the oxygen tank provides you air so you inhale through the, you know it would come through the same place as the filter on the intake but you've not got a filter you've got the scuba tank you inhale with that then exhale out the air so you're limited to how much oxygen is in your scuba tank or SCBA tank your oxygen tank but um, obviously that's completely fine because that's purified air that you've got from somewhere it's bottled up so you've got like an oxygen reserve because one thing to mention with gas masks that a lot of people don't actually seem to know is that if you're in an environment where you won't get oxygen you will suffocate with the mask on for example if you're in a house fire or um, in some very dense smoke um, you can suffocate because although the mask filter is very useful at stopping you choking to death on the, um, on the smoke and the smoke getting into your lungs the um, filter can't provide you with oxygen so if there's no oxygen to inhale you will still suffocate so that's one important thing to remember is the gas mask isn't designed to provide you with oxygen you need a self-contained breathing apparatus for that another thing you can get is a rebreather and what a rebreather is or a rebreather is um, you have a sort of pack for it and it contains a system and I'm not sure totally how they work but I'm assuming it's a chemical reaction that manages to turn carbon dioxide back into oxygen in the tank so that's designed so you can for a limited period breathe out and then recycle your oxygen but a rebreather obviously eventually will run out because it's using a chemical sort of formula inside or something to um, give you oxygen when you exhale carbon dioxide and in that case your exhale tube is also linked in so you'd have one pipe going from the unit to the inhale another pipe coming out as an exhaust and it will cycle through a unit so that's how they work and as said they can't provide you with oxygen and this filter is basically designed so until it gets fully used it will filter air coming through and chemicals will adsorb stick to the charcoal filter so they can't get through to the user pretty much all masks are designed like this it's the current sort of system um, it's probably not going anywhere the system's been around since World War One, World War II um, saying it's only really since the 50s and onwards the 60s that um, asbestos stopped being used and other sort of compounds were used um, that were safer say so some masks like this, the Russian filters, we don't know exactly what's in them there might be a compound containing asbestos but it's not a big block of blue asbestos and then you have your charcoal filter and the charcoal just does its job of taking the, chem the nasty chemicals away so that's how a gas mask works, it went on a bit longer than I intended but that's all there is to it.